Hi, welcome to our channel. We're the Simple Teachers. Today we have a teacher tip video for you focused on working smarter and not harder. Yes, one of my favorite things. And I'm gonna start us off. I want you to think about doing small things well. I have a little, I don't know, a thing that I say. Small things done well saves time. Now, when I say this, what I mean is to be specific in what you're teaching, you pick something small, something focused, and then you teach it well. Mm -hmm. And then you have more kids that get it. They get there with you. They understand it well because you taught it well. And then you're done and you move on to the next small thing. So small things done well saves time. It's a comment that I say, I guess a comment is what it's called all the time. Yeah. And it's, it's true in teaching, heck in life. Yeah, it's context <laughs> is endless, right? Yes. I like that one. Um, another way to work smarter, not harder, is use explicit instruction. Explicit instruction is making sure you state things clearly and as simple as possible. So we do this in gradual release. In that modeling, you need to have explicit, clear, simple language. And Angie always says, sound like a broken record. So through <laughs> that, that guided release, we need to, that gradual release, we need to make sure we're continually using that explicit instruction. Our students will be using it, will be using it, and will truly sound like a broken record. If you're not feeling like you're sounding like a broken record, maybe you haven't used enough explicit instruction. Yeah, maybe you didn't say broken record enough. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I say it a lot. <laughs> All right, another thing that will help you work smarter and not harder is using and understanding RTI or MTSS. RTI is response to intervention and MTSS is multiple tiered systems of support. And those two are kind of synonymous. MTSS is kind of the new term. And those, I'll just, the triangle, maybe we'll get us a little visual put up, is we focus on our tier one instruction. We want to get 80% of our students at 80% proficiency through our explicit instruction. So we're gonna get that first. And then once we have that 80% at 80%, then we move on to tier two. And we only should have to intervene to 20% of our students. And then we can poke in on those 20% in those small things that they need and do a really targeted or focused intervention that aligns with our tier one instruction. Mm -hmm. And after that, we may have a little tiny group of students that still need a little more. Those are our top tier kids, those three tier kids. And some of those things that we have to intervene on with them might be going back to uh, holes that they have, skills that may not align with our tier one instruction. Now, when we do RTI as a whole, it is a big, big thing. It's not just one piece, it's the whole thing. We will or can have 1.06 effect size. That's huge in research. That is almost as much as three years growth. That's so big. If we understood that, I mean, it gives me the chills, but if you all understood how huge that was, you'd be jumping off your seats. It is the biggest effect size of anything I've seen in, in education combined. And so we need to understand RTI or MTSS so well that we do the whole thing. It's not just one piece. It's a, it's a system. It's huge. And we need to implement those pieces in our classroom. So we work Thank you. smarter, not harder. That's a great one. Yeah. The next thing is, is how we plan. So when we plan our language arts instruction, we have a tool that can help you work smarter, not harder. I use this every day and it's free. We'll put the link below. Think of the reading components. So we're often given teaching resources, right? Like our reading programs, you name it. We have all these tools and resources. 
but what comes first? The reading components. So if we plan, if I, and if I were in first grade, we look at our fluency, vocabulary, comprehension, writing, and then we back up. We've got alphabet knowledge, phonemic awareness, concepts of print, and phonics. When we plan the reading components, and in second grade, we get to kind of chop a little bit off. We get to go to phonics and fluency, vocabulary, comprehension, and writing. But when we plan with those reading components, we are working smarter and not harder because it is so much easier to start there at the component and then ask yourself, what is my scope and sequence that's provided to me, maybe by my reading program? What are they suggesting I use? And if it fits to what your class needs, use it. But it allows you to make the teacher decision by using tools and things to support you. But first, start with that reading component. Yeah, we teach those every day and you have the knowledge of your class yeah. and what they need, not the program. The uh -huh. program does not have that knowledge. Yeah. So, awesome. All right, next, to work harder and not smarter is to have procedures. So procedures in your classroom, well, the list could be endless how many procedures you have. Uh, my goal was if it bugged me, I was going to make a procedure for it. Sharpening pencils during class time bugged me. So I had a procedure for it. Yeah. Um, messy lining up maybe bugs you, have a procedure for it. So if it bothers you, have a procedure for it. And then teach it well. Teach it with explicit instruction and gradual release. And then it won't bug you anymore because the kids will be good at it. And you'll have a procedure in place yeah. where the kids will do it now so have your procedures and then be consistent with those procedures so you're going to do the same thing every time they line up you're going to do the same thing every time you have the pencil sharpening is always going to happen at the same time or you know whatever your procedure is so be consistent with your procedures once you have them and that will help you work smarter not harder and it really helps the class dynamic as well. It'll right. help your classroom feel safe and secure yeah. and dependable, reliable. Yeah. Yeah. There's no questions asked. This is yeah. what we do. Yep. And they, awesome. they know. Yeah. You don't have to remind people. The number six work smarter, not harder tip is don't do for your students what they can do yeah. for themselves. Yeah. And this is different in every classroom. Yeah. Every year. There's not like a second grade list of what they could do for themselves. Yeah. Every class is different, but you're going to quickly wear yourself out if you're always doing things for your students that they actually can do for themselves. Yeah. Um, have a way to get your students so they're in charge of themselves. And this could be instructionally, behaviorally, procedurally. It could be a lot of different things, giving them jobs. Yeah, that's what I think of. I think of my classroom roles. They run my classroom, my morning routine. They each have their own role. It runs my morning so that I can then go talk to individual students who I know I need to reflect with in the morning and get our day started on the right foot. Yeah. If I had to be in charge of that morning procedure, I wouldn't have that opportunity to do that. So there's times in my day like that where I'm out of it and they're in charge. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's an example, but there's tons of ways this can happen. Yeah. Because you're you will always be bringing new explicit instruction and if you always have to keep in charge of everything else, you will be worn out. Oh yeah. It's, we were talking how if you're feeling like it's the first month of school and it's not the first month of school anymore, maybe we're not stepping back enough yeah. um, because that first month of school, it's they hard. depend on you for everything because yeah. you're building everything, yeah. but we need to start stepping back. And that looks different throughout yep. the year yep. and through what you're doing. We want teachers to stay in the classroom. We don't want you to be worn out and tired and leave the profession. So we want to help you do things that will keep you there. So we want you to work smarter and not harder. So hopefully yeah. 
some of these will help. Well, we hope you enjoyed these tips. Share them, apply one of them in your classroom, and you're probably already doing a lot of them, yeah. so keep it up. Thanks for subscribing to our channel. If you haven't, please do like this video, leave a comment, share this video with a friend, and we'll catch you next time. Simply, Simply teach. teach.